Welcome, I'm Pam Laricchia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Samantha Dondelinger. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Pam. Oh, it's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. Now, we were recently introduced to a mutual friend um, and I'm really excited to learn more about your experience growing up unschooling. So to get us started, can you share with us a bit about you and your family? Sure. Yeah. So I'm 20 years old and I grew up in central Maryland with my mom and my dad. And then I have an older brother and a younger sister. And we were actually unschooled our whole lives. So my brother, he went to school for about three months, I think, when he was three. And then very quickly, my mom realized this is not the right fit for him. And then after that, we just all switched to unschooling and we never looked back. Oh, that's awesome. That's fun. Yeah, I had never heard. I didn't know about uh, homeschooling or even unschooling um, when my kids were young. But yeah, I eventually discovered it when they went to school and it wasn't such a great fit. It's like, there's gotta yeah. be- <laughs> eventually I found it. So that was awesome. I would love to know a bit about your interests growing up. So like what unschooling was like for you growing up and how you pursued those interests. Yeah, so I was definitely your typical art kid. So I loved watercolor, drawing, painting, all that stuff. Um, Also music and playing guitar and singing and nature. I was very fortunate to grow up um, in the country. So we had lots of woods around us and I could go out hiking and exploring just all day. So my favorite part of the day was in the afternoon, I would go down to our little stream and take my sketchbook and just draw the little rocks and the plants and the animals and stuff. Um, yeah, and so my brother, he he had very different interests than I did and my younger sister did as well. So it was kind of nice that we got to all explore our interests individually, but we also you know, lived together and we spent a lot of time together. Whereas I think, if we all went to school, we probably would never see each other because we all had different interests, you know, after school activities. So it was very nice. We could explore them together. That's sweet. Yeah. That's the fun piece when you have that space to just be yourself, you know, how different people are even in, even inside the same family, right? We really are individuals and it's fun to see that like siblings or even parents are uh, have different interests and are exploring them. I think for me, for me as a parent, the root was the excitement that each of us had about what we're excited about. That was always a place yeah. where I'm so excited about this, you know, <laughs> and share that little piece. Like, so everybody knows these other things exist in the world. <laughs> yeah. But to have that time and space to dive into our own interests. So did that kind of art interest follow you through most of your years growing up? Yeah, yeah. And it it always stayed a bit of a hobby. So I thought I was going to study, you know, psychology or English or something um, not strictly art focused. And then recently it's kind of grown into more than a hobby. So I've started doing a lot of commission work and I've started selling watercolors on Etsy and stuff. Um, so it's very interesting that it's kind of stuck with me my whole life. And it's just now I'm realizing, oh, wait, like I can actually do this for a living or I can actually like get money for this in return. And yeah, it's very fun how it's, how it's bloomed. Yeah, that is an interesting piece. And I guess yeah. too, you're learning, you're now you're learning that whole world too, like the Etsy world, the selling world, um, and the, the, the art piece too, like, I'm thinking of like other artists as well, you know, cause you're getting into that bigger picture and exploring. It, it, it's interesting, like um, how your art a lot lives alongside, like, I feel like that might, you know, help with your confidence with your art too, in seeing how it lives alongside every other art that's out there, right? Yeah, exactly. That's very true. There's a lot of validation and seeing it in a shop next to other pieces because, you know, growing up, you see this art in a store and you're like, wow, like they must be really good if they got it into a store. And the other day I was at work, I work at a little shop and um, someone was looking at the cards I was selling there and they just said, oh, do you have room for another wholesale account? And I was like, sure. And it was just that easy. And now like I'm selling in their shop too. So it's interesting how you know, the more you put yourself out there and just trust that the right people are going to find it, 
the more the universe kind of like gives you people that will like guide you into the right places. I know it, it's funny how that happens. And it's so hard to explain to people, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when you're open and curious you, these opportunities, I guess we're, we see them more. We are, our energy just kind of, you know, like somebody would ask you because you felt like you were approachable, you mm-hmm. know, about setting up another account. It, it, it's, it is amazing. That's something that has been such a surprise for me with unschooling is that when you're open and curious and you know, you're, you're, um, what your interests are. So you're out engaging with the world. Like you were in a shop that had art in it. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So all these, so many doors open unexpectedly. Yeah. Yet it's not an actual surprise because you're living in that world. You're enjoying that world and you're noticing opportunities that are around. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think another trait of unschooling or something that unschooling helps nurture is bravery and just being okay with putting yourself out there and trying new things and knowing it's okay if I mess up or I don't get it right the first time like it's okay there's really no consequence like I can just try again (laughs) I love that you brought that up because that is something that certainly through school and more conventional parenting and society in general mistakes Mm -hmm. are really look down on and um people learn kids learn that they don't want to make mistakes so that does make them more fearful of putting themselves just in a spot rather than you know growing up you learn oh that didn't work I'll try something else oh that didn't work I'll try something you learn from those moments it's not about everything has to be perfect or somebody's judgment of right exactly yeah yeah and it's interesting even looking back on you know, part-time jobs I've had, how Mm -hmm. sometimes my bosses, they would get really upset when people make mistakes and they would kind of reinforce it by sending out a mass email saying, don't do this. And this person did this and don't make that mistake. Um, And the job I have now, my bosses are amazing. They're like, literally you can, as long as the store doesn't burn down, you, you can make no mistakes and everything is fixable. And they just really nurture and meet you where you're at. And I feel like because of that, I'm just thriving so much at the job and they're really like seeing my gifts and appreciating my gifts. And they're not saying, Oh yeah, like you go sit in the back and organize things because I'm a people person. So they have me out on the floor talking to people and I'm like, Oh good. Like you recognize that I'm good at that. And that's what I like to do. And now I can do more of that. (laughs) That's just another beautiful example because you know, some people again, like would be leaving those jobs. Like, Oh, you've got this job. You have to fit in. You have to like make that work. And if you leave that job, that's a failure. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas you can find what fits well, right? Like that we, we wouldn't see that as a failure so much as you're learning something more about yourself. You're learning that the environment didn't work. And it doesn't mean that those are the only environment, environments that are out there. You can find things that make a better fit for us. And so that's just more information. You know what? Yeah, I can see how that works. And, you know, and also choices like if you, if the money's important, you know, staying there while you're looking, mm-hmm. you know, there's just so many options when it's not about avoiding failure. Yeah, exactly. Right? You don't feel yeah. stuck. It's like, okay, that's not working that well. I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to find other things. And life just kind of unfolds, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Okay, now when we first connected, you mentioned that travel is also an interest of yours. Yes. So I'm curious to hear how that developed and if you could share some of your stories about your experience traveling. Yeah, of course. So one of the uh, reasons my dad actually decided to um, unschool or he agreed with my mom that yes, unschooling was a good fit is because he thought, oh, we can, we can travel a lot. Like the kids aren't in school. We can take on schooling anywhere. So we had, um, a little pop-up camper growing up and we would tow it behind our car and we would go camping and drive across country and just explore the U S a lot growing up. So that really showed me just all the different cultures and all the different people 
that there are in the world and so many different places. And that really opened up my perception really young. Um, and so when I was 18 and I, you know, finished high school and all that, um, instead of going straight to college, I decided to take a gap year. So, and I knew I wanted to travel for sure and just meet some more people and make some more connections. So that's when I went abroad for the first time. Um, and I traveled for about eight months. So I started in Europe and then went to Costa Rica and Latin America and then ended in Australia. And it was, yeah, it was an amazing experience. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what was, so what was like your favorite part of it? Just pick, pick one. Yeah, probably all the people. Yeah. All the people I met. Yeah. And all the connections I can make. And I mean, I still talk to them to this day and I know, you know, if I'm in, um, of a small island in Australia, like I have some place to stay, which is really cool. Or like, you know, on the coast of, of uh, Ireland, like I have people there, I know people there, so I can like chat with them. And especially, you know, with the pandemic going on right now, like I'm checking in with everyone across the world and just hearing like how they're doing and like how, um, their life is different than mine right now. And it's just, yeah, it means to stay connected. That is so interesting. It's interesting because, you know, what stood out for me is you were also talking about uh, the job that you're doing right now and how you're working out front because you're a people person. And now when you're talking <laughs> about traveling, it's like it's about the people that I met. Right. Yeah. So it, that's what we get with the space to discover what um, pulls us the most. Right. What fascinates us. And it sounds like for you, people and connecting with people has is kind of the thread that's uh, weaving through a lot of your experiences. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the funny thing is I grew up so shy. So probably until I was about 10 or 12, I wouldn't really talk to people and I was very shy and very introverted. Um, and I think had I been in a regular school system, I don't think I ever would have gotten the chance to develop the part of me that loves people and loves connection just because I would be so scared and so nervous mm -hmm. um but like the safe space that unschooling created I eventually realized like oh okay I can start to connect with people and talk with people and then once I started to do that more and more I was like yeah I like this and then that just kept growing from there <laughs> <laughs> I think that is definitely one of the really valuable things about unschooling is that people kids can develop on their own timetable versus yeah. anybody else's timetable right so to be comfortable with who you are in each stage like and that's totally okay that you're introverted and you didn't want to you know um connect or talk with people you know being more shy and giving the space for that because when people can branch out and pursue things when they're ready for them, I feel like it's just night and day because they have agency in that situation versus somebody for years saying, come on, Samantha, you really should go over there and talk to the people in that group. Come on, and, you know, because it even takes the person's agency away because when, if they do it, right, they're doing it to um, satisfy somebody else. They're doing it because their parent is telling them to do it. Their parent is telling it's so it kind of takes the choice out of it. So it's even harder to peel back and figure out if it's something that you like to do. Right. Yeah, exactly. You have the choice to go over there. So you've got all that baggage in there on top of. So am I kind of enjoying this because I'm supposed to? Or is this something that I personally <laughs> actually enjoy and want to dive into more? Right. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And I think that applies to so many things with unschooling, too, even you know, growing up, I loved literature. So I would read, you know, Jane Austen and Henry James and, you know, all these books that were being assigned in, uh, you know, AP lit classes, but because I was choosing to read them, I was, I was loving them. And then I would talk to people who were in, you know, public schools and they're like, yeah, like, oh, I have to write this report on this paper and like, or I have to write this report on this book. And like, I didn't even read it or I didn't finish it. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, that's my favorite book. Like, let's read it. Like, let's talk about it. <laughs> Choice is just like night and day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> That's amazing. So let's, I'd love to dive into, um, you talked about a gap year there that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, high school and the choice of college and alternatives to college. Now, did you uh, attend high school at all? Or are you were you talking about um, just high school age? You want to tell yeah. us a little bit about that, those years? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was in a couple co-ops um, mm-hmm. during high school years. So typically it would be one day a week and it would be extracurricular classes. So lots of art classes. My friends talked me into taking an improv class one time, which was so scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like fun classes like that. And then they did a little graduation when I turned 18, like at the end of what would be high school. So I kind of got a little bit of that closure. Um which was really nice. And then we would also write reports kind of as little end of the year reports about like our favorite things that we learned that year. And that was also nice for unschooling because I think sometimes, or at least I felt a little bit like, oh, I should be doing more or I should be learning more. Um, So to be able to write it all down, gave me a lot of confidence and like, oh yeah, no, I did learn stuff this year. I just didn't notice. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I just didn't learn it like in a classroom reading a book or like writing it down but I learned a lot so that was very nice to be able to translate the skills that I was learning into more of an academic approved skill Mm -hmm. that is that is a lot of fun in because that can be something like even whether it's conversations or whatever but sometimes we can get um just caught up in our days and um I know sometimes it can feel like you know, what am I learning? I don't know, because it can be different than what, especially when you're older, you have often have more contact with um, kids who are in high school, for example, right? And they're writing the book reports and they're doing the science experiments or whatever. (laughs) And it can feel like those are what we should be doing, right? And when we're following our interests, you know what it is for me anyway, I think so much of the learning that is, is almost incidental, right? Because yeah. you're just doing the things that you want to do. Yeah. So you hardly even notice that you're learning because you don't sit down to learn. You sit down to do something mm-hmm. You sit down to um, do your art, right? Or whatever it is that you're interested in and passionate about, you sit down to do it. You don't mm-hmm. sit down to learn. Yet you learn so much along the way, but it can be so useful to just take that time to realize um, all those things that you have learned along the way, even if just in the past year, the past six months or whatever. Um, Just so just that level of self-awareness so that you don't feel um, behind other people. Right. It's just different. You're just exactly. learning different things. And for me, that's always so fascinating because people in general think learning is so hard. And when you talk to kids in school and in high school, it is hard. And so much of that is because it's not their choice. It's not things that they're interested in. And it's, it is harder to learn things like that because, you know, your brain's just not connected to it in that moment. And it's more like just random pieces of information because it's more shared as information, not as a bigger picture, something like an interest is, right? And that you're just picking things up along the way as you go. And it can almost feel bad that learning is so easy so that you discount that learning. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really important or valuable because it was just the thing that I'm interested in. Yeah, right? that, that kind of distinction. So recognizing all the learning that's happening can be really valuable. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I've even noticed that when I, so I dual enrolled uh, in my senior year of high school in community college. Yeah. And I, for a little bit, I could feel myself losing that love for learning be, just because it was so stressful. And I thought, oh, like, this is how it's supposed to be. Like I'm supposed to be studying really late and, you know, doing flashcards and reading all this stuff. And it's very overwhelming. And I would have to catch myself and be like, no, like I'm really interested in this topic and, you know, I'm paying for this class. Like it's a privilege to be able to take this class and I want to enjoy it. So how can I enjoy this experience? And then that's when I could kind of shift into, no, like this is a choice. 
I want to learn this because I'm curious about the topic and I want to get my degree eventually rather than being like, oh, okay, no, I have to do this. The teacher's telling me I have to write this paper. It's like, no, like what would happen if I could explore this paper? And it, it makes it so much more fun. <laughs> right? I mean, because when you get into the system, it can be pretty easy to lose that feeling of agency like exactly how you described it, right? That all of a sudden I'm doing this for the teacher. I'm doing this for the teacher. I have to do this. It is easy to fall into that mindset. So reminding yourself, no, I chose to be here. I want that longer term, you know, degree, you know, whatever the reason why you chose it in the first place, right? Just because there is so much, right? Yeah. <laughs> This gets so busy and so tough. You can lose that. But the reminder that, no, I chose this. I can choose how I approach it. This is stuff I want to learn and I want to play with. Um, it, it's night and day in the end, right? Yeah. When you remember to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And well, the funny thing is too, like I, as soon as I made that switch, I started getting really good grades and other people in class would be like, oh, like, can we study together? Like, how are you getting these grades? And like, I just like got interested in the material and I just actually was reading it because I wanted to know, I wanted to know the answer. Like I would ask myself these questions like, Ooh, there was a psychology class. Like, Ooh, like what does this experience mean? And you know, what would happen if this happened? And just like really engaging with the material rather than trying to memorize it. And that's what helped me remember it for the tests and stuff. Yeah, because that that is where the real learning lies versus the memorizing, right? Yeah. Is that curiosity and playing around with it. You're finding the connections, what's interesting to you personally, and then it sticks so much more, right? Because you've actually learned it because it made sense to you the way your brain was processing and the way your brain was curious about it, right? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, so I'm curious when you look back at growing up on schooling so far, I know you're yeah. 20 now. What do you appreciate most about the experience at this yeah. point? Oh, I love that question. Uh, I think I really appreciate the individuality that it offered, kind of how we were talking at the beginning, mm -hmm. how it just, it really meets the kid where they're at and what they need. Um, so for me, that was a lot of, you know, me being on my own and doing my art and kind of getting to know myself. And then when I was comfortable starting to step out into the world and make those connections and experiment and see, oh, what happens if I do this? And what happens if I say this? Um, and then, you know, for my brother, he, he loved math and he loved science. So he took a lot of um, math and science courses online and did that in his free time. And then he played a lot of video games with friends and that's kind of how he connected to people. Um, and then my sister, she liked more structure. So she would make a little structure for herself, like, okay, this is what I want to focus on today. And then this is what I want to focus on tomorrow. Um, and then that really helped her organize herself. Even now I see her do it with, cause she's in college right now. She'll like write everything out on her planner and all her tasks and she's just so organized. Um, so it just really nurtures the kids and their individual needs. I love that because it, it is like back to what we were talking about before, how, um, kids even in the same family are all very different people right and to be able to explore and embrace and figure out what works for each of you individually that is that is priceless I think because when when it doesn't happen at some point as an adult you know it's really valuable to figure to figure that stuff out. And for me, I think it's so much harder at that point because you've had so many years of being told what to do um, and being told what's right and wrong and good and bad, that that's a lot of layers, like which is what unschooling parents who did not grow up unschooling, that is the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. to, to figure this out and to realize the value of that so that they can support their kids earlier. In, in being able to figure out how they tick really yeah right? exactly yeah. yeah and it's funny because I think that's also how life is after school and after college is you're not 
going to be assigned this course and then you do all the research and then you get a grade at the end. Like that's not how it works. <laughs> so you're, you know, you're trained to like work this certain way and then you kind of have to untrain yourself afterwards. And mm -hmm. at least for me, it just made more sense to not train my way, not train myself that way in the first place. <laughs> And it worked a lot. It worked for me. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, and that's what we talk about so much is like, it's like, okay, we're just going to choose to start living life now. Yeah, exactly. Right? And the kids gain experience, it's, you know, because, you know, your, your younger sister is uh, love structure, right? Yeah. And it's all about the to-do lists and, and that kind of stuff and ticking them off. That's great to know. And you can structure yourself and your life even without having to have school in it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, like you said, when she was growing up, she, you know, came up with what her, she wanted her day to look like and she laid it out for herself and she followed that. And I'm sure she had gained some experience with how she felt when it didn't go the way that she <laughs> was planning it out or whatever. <laughs> right. There was just so many experiences that you can have growing up and that you can learn from that you take with you instead of, okay, I've graduated college. Now all of a sudden I have to figure out this whole new real world, right? Finally graduated to the real world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's also why I was so comfortable traveling after I turned 18, because I, I had a very good sense of my world in Maryland, at least. Mm -hmm. And you know, how, how my brain worked and how I could interact with people. And so it was a lot easier to go off and travel because I, I wanted to learn more about the world. And I already had a good starting point where I feel like if I was in school for, you know, almost 18 years, I wouldn't have had that real world world experience. And I would need a lot more time before I could jump into something like that. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. Yeah. And so often I think that's what um, people who've been through school, um, take that time off. They need those transition yeah. years. So they're in those transition gap years, maybe that they take between high school and college or whatever. It's more learning about themselves than it mm -hmm. is learning about the world. Right. Whereas for you, the travel was about learning about the world, but they find they have to go somewhere else in the world to get completely out of that environment so they can actually explore who they are. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And what well, was so funny, because that's, I started the gap year with a program with a lot of other kids who oh, yeah. were in public school. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's so funny because I, I know for myself, I need a lot of alone time. So after a full day of doing activities with the kids, I would, or with the young adults, I would, um, you know, go for a walk by myself or be like, okay, now I'm going to go like, journal for a little bit. And everyone thought I was so weird at first. They were like, what do you mean? Like, you don't want to like hang out with us more. And I was like, no, I really like you guys. I just know for myself, like, I'm going to feel better tomorrow if I take some time for myself right now. And they were like, oh, Okay. Like, like it was just interesting how we had such different perceptions of like what we were working on, basically. Like I already knew that about myself. And so I had other priorities and they still were figuring that out. And it is just interesting. Yeah. Like we all went for different reasons. Uh -huh. That's really interesting. Yeah. No, I didn't yeah. know more of a formal program. That is very cool to yeah. that you could see uh, how different people were approaching this, this, freedom this time right yeah yeah cool now <laughs> with that I would be very curious to hear what you, kind of advice that you would give to even newer unschooling parents that as they start out on this unschooling journey you know with younger kids uh, what would you like to share that you think would be helpful for them at this point from your position? Yeah, I would say to trust yourself is really important because um, I know talking to my mom about, you know, her decision to unschool, it was really scary at first and she didn't know. Well, she knew it was the right decision, but everyone else around her wasn't so sure. Yeah. yeah. And so she started to doubt herself when, you know, her dad would say things like, oh, but what about college? And well, what about friends? And she couldn't 
really articulate how she knew it was going to be okay, but she just knew intuitively. So I would say, I mean, you know, your kids best, so trust yourself and then, you know, listen to your kids and, you know, kind of like what I was talking about before, like meet them where they are and unschooling for your oldest child might look really different than unschooling for your youngest child. So it doesn't always have to be the same type of unschooling. It's really about meeting your kids where they're at. Oh, I love that because and meeting them where they're at and as who they are, like you were saying, our whole style, like our communication style, how we support them can look very different for each child, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that is that is a very big piece. And I, I love what you said about your mom. Um, when you first start unschooling, I think I there was a good six months there that we basically as a family cocooned. And it was because my kids left school. Um, So they were in grade four, two and like junior kindergarten. So for them, this was like that freedom to just be able to play, right? To play and relax and just unwind from that. But for me, it was also useful because yes, I could not answer the questions yet, even though I intuitively knew that this was a good thing for us, right? So not only did I not have to try and articulate answers, I also was able to watch my kids. Yeah. Actually, and learn more about how, how unschooling works and start to see it in action so that I finally kind of found the words so that I could then go out and answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> questions, but I totally know what she means when she talks about that. Yeah. That's definitely something that newer unschooling parents often kind of struggle with. You're like, this makes so much sense to me, but it's so hard to explain to other people yet because you don't have the language. You don't have the um, experience within your own family, seeing it in action with your own kids. And it takes a few months for that to happen because, you know, as we were talking about earlier for unschooling parents, that shift to even what learning looks like, right? Because at first, you know, you grew up in school typically and you're looking at, you think learning looks like that, right? So you're kind of, that's the lens that you're looking at your kids. Oh, they're just, just playing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But when you start to see that learning, you open up your lens and you see all the learning that's happening every day with just about every encounter you see them making choices and see, even though siblings make different choices, they're the choice that works for them. I can see why they made that choice and the other child made this choice. Yeah. Even though they're different, they're so in sync with who they are as a person. It's, it is a really, it's a, it's such a stressful time, but such a fascinating time too. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think also, you know, like the exercise that I was talking about earlier, how um, at the end of the year or even at the end, like you do it monthly or every six months, kind of typing up, what you observed or like what, um, what you guys have been working on, like that could be another way to kind of validate some of those like inner critic voices in your head. Like, Oh, but is this really right? Like if that's something that works for you and you're a more structured person, but your kids aren't as structured, that could be a way to kind of meet, meet them in the middle. Like, okay, well, you know, Gary likes to play with blocks. So we're learning about like geometry and like this and that. And (laughs) So you're kind of like transferring what they're doing into the language that you're already familiar with. Definitely. I actually still have some of my journals from that first year (laughs) and schooling because yeah, I needed like, I'm one who kind of has to write things down to figure out what I think (laughs) that helped me process. And I could start, it was easier for me to see the patterns having written things down. Right. Yeah. And yes, at first they were much more structured to, oh yes, yeah, see, this is this is math and, and this is reading. And you can tell over time as that lens kind of falls away that I didn't need to justify to mm-hmm. myself anymore over time. Like learning is learning and all learning is valuable. So it, it is really fascinating. So yeah, to understand how we ourselves learn as people, right? And how we process things. So whether it's writing or whether it's 
you know, you could be making audio notes for yourself if, if you like to talking or even photographs, if you're more visual, yeah. visual, right. That just a photograph of an activity can bring that back to mind. It's like, oh yeah, no, we're, we're learning. Look at what they're doing. Oh, and that, that <laughs> brings the scene back to you. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I would say the other thing too, is, um, to find a community for yourself, you know, as a parent, like, yes, connections are important for your kids, but also as a parent to find other parents who are in schooling. Um, and now it's a lot easier because you can do it online. So you can do like Zoom meetings or, you know, like <laughs> chats or Facebook groups. So there are, there are more and more unschoolers out there than I, than I ever realized. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's another great point because you do find yourself like, especially in that cocooning time, kind of pulling away. It's because it's like, oh, I have less in common now with these people or interactions feel more judgy at first. Like, why the heck are you doing that? Why? Because you know what? I had I didn't know homeschooling exists because no one in my circle, like in Canada, it it did not um, become popular or it was years behind the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. Um, so it was so valuable to me finding an online community. It's like, oh, there are other families living this way and just sharing our days, sharing what our kids were up to was inspiring, sharing the relationships that we had that were so different. It was, I can't even imagine what it would have been like without, so, you know, that online connection is just as valuable Right then, and then you know, maybe we'd travel to conferences once or twice a year, and we would actually meet up face to face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but online was my lifeline. I would pop in for, you know, even just ten minutes each morning. It got me recentered. It got me re-energized, and just excited for the day when the kids woke up. So, I love that point, Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I'm curious what you're up to right now. You got any, what your plans are for the next little while and maybe how people can connect with you. I'll put links to your Etsy store oh, in the show notes as well. If people yeah. want to do your art is so you're um, working towards filling up your, your Etsy store with art and you're working at the, is that, is that an art store that you're at? What kind of store is that? Yeah, so it's it's a really cool store. It's um called Nest Natural in Clarksville, Maryland, and it's all about fair trade and ethically sourced, mm -hmm. handmade, small batch um, artwork. And um yeah, it's a very it's a fun environment to be in. <laughs> and I'm actually so I'm enrolled in school in Australia, um, but because of the pandemic right now and the borders are closed, mm -hmm. and it looks like they're going to be closed for the rest of the year. So that's why I'm just kind of chilling here in Maryland for a while and yeah, doing my arts. Um, I'm working at the store and then I'm working at an animal shelter right now. Um, but I used to volunteer at in high school actually, and now I'm there part-time, which is really, really fun. So yeah, just making connections and doing my art stuff. Um, what, what, are you enrolled in? In Australia. what was what, that? What are you enrolled in? So I'm studying photojournalism. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, because like we were talking before, I love connecting with people and hearing their stories. And then there's also that art piece of, you know, photography and taking photographs. And I can travel with that too. So it's just, <laughs> it's the perfect degree for me. <laughs> All those yeah. things weaving together. That's yeah. beautiful, Samantha. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it took me a while because I knew I wanted, you know, those three components, like the art, the connection, and then the ability to travel and the freedom yeah. and it took me a while to decide on that degree like I didn't even know it was a thing until um I was actually traveling I was on my gap year traveling and I met a photographer there and he was giving me more and more information about what he does and how much he loves it and I was like yeah that sounds like something I would like and then after that it just it kind of snowballed Wow, that's brilliant. That's I love that. And again, yeah, the timetable doesn't matter. The timetable is yeah. what works for the individual, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's also what I like about international schools is, um, well, they're a lot more laid back. They don't have, most of them don't even have homework. They're very in the moment and the experience. And, um, you know, if there is homework, it's like going out and doing stuff in the cities and in the world, which I really appreciate. 
And then gap years are a lot more common overseas. So I think half of the students at the school I'm at, they're, um, they enroll when they're about 18 and the other half are, you know, 20 and, and over. So when they first come in. So it's nice that there's more diversity and more experiences and different ages. And it's just like a very rich, fun learning environment. That's so cool. Now, so are you doing online classes right now or are you just going to start once the borders open up and you can travel? Yeah. So I, I considered online, but with the time change, it would, they would be through the night. <laughs> and since it is photojournalism, it's a lot about, you know, looking at photos real time and portfolio review. So they had to be live classes. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm just, I think I'm just going to wait. I'm in no rush. So I'm just going to wait until the borders open and I can go in person. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. I love that, Samantha. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm having fun here too. Like I really like my job, my art now. So it's, I'm having a good time. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. It was so much fun. <laughs> oh, I had so much fun too. Thank you for having me, Pam. I had a lot of fun. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. And like I said, I will put um, links to your stuff uh, in the show notes so that people can connect with you if they'd like. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. Okay. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye, Bye. Pam. Bye.